So as promised, this is day two of our series of one-on-one -on -one interviews with front-running mayoral candidates, uh, your candidates, your questions. And we begin right now with a new one. Anthony Fury mm -hmm. joining us. Uh, thanks for being here, Anthony. Uh, let's talk about this. In the last couple of days, you've talked about the momentum you have in this campaign, kind of challenging Mark Saunders to say, look, I'm the one who's kind of getting the support in the latest polls. I'm the one who can knock off Olivia Chow. Do you believe you can do that at this point? I mean, her lead appears to be, you know, double digits over Saunders and a little more than that over you at this point. Yeah, Nick, great question. I know yesterday you had the president of Forum Research, longstanding pollster on there, talking about how basically I'm in a statistical tie for second mm -hmm. uh, with a couple others, but I'm the guy with momentum, and that's been great to feel that energy, uh, whether it's in the polling numbers or, or on the streets, knocking on doors, engaging with Toronto residents uh, these past number of weeks to, to see myself surge up in the polls there to get to that position. And, and look, Mark Saunders, I, I didn't come on here to speak ill of any other mm -hmm. campaign, but we do see that he has stalled. He's at the same numbers he was at two months ago, despite having more media exposure, being better financed than I am, yet I keep trending up in the momentum pattern. And we also see that uh, Mark Saunders supporters would also vote for me in a heartbeat, but for whatever reason, it, it doesn't go the same way. My supporters don't go to him. I think because, you know, I've done a real authentic campaign that's really just about my experiences as the father of three small kids who wants to deal with affordability, who doesn't want to see those needles in the playground anymore, an authentic campaign, whereas we know Mr. Saunders, uh, people have noticed that he kind of just announces what I've announced just sort of five days later. But, but look, this is about selling my positive vision for the city that, mm. that I really love, and, and I believe we can fix this. Oh. Okay. okay, so let's get to your vision. Uh, our viewers are asking this morning, first one coming from Lisa, who has says, uh, you've made it clear you will remove encampments. What is your plan for those living in them? Yeah, so first of all, it's a family first policy. I'm hearing from people, yes, downtown, but also Scarborough, Etobicoke, North York, who see encampments moving out to the suburbs. They also see needles appearing in their parks. You know, I used to see the needles in, in Moss Park, near where we live. We were raising our kids. Now we're over in the East End, and, and we're actually finding them there as well. So we have to deal with the drug crisis that is playing out in these injection sites, that's playing out in the parks, and it's worsening. So it's a family-first policy, but I want to work uh, with public health, with the province, uh, the federal government, who has a responsibility to deal with the fact 40 percent of people in the shelter system are recent refugees, something I'm going to work with Mr. Trudeau with. Mm. So we're, we're a compassionate city. We want to deal uh, with people in a supportive, helpful way, but we got to put families first. I can't tell uh, four-year-old, five-year-old kids that they have to wait, you know, one year, two years, three more summers until they can have a, a full, proper access uh, to public spaces again. Speaking of compassion, Anthony, another viewer is writing and saying, will you cut services dealing with environment, seniors, TTC, or public health? No, but I can tell you when you're knocking on the door, this is an election about priorities. Affordability is a priority. So I'm not going to bring in those new proposed taxes, things like road tolls that the other candidates have toyed with. People want public safety as a priority. Whatever the purpose of a meeting I'm having, it invariably goes to someone saying, I used to let my 13-year-old take public transit. Not anymore. That is so sad to hear this. I'm going to hire 500 new police officers to have a mm -hmm. visible presence on our streets, on public transit, in our communities, phase out the drug injection sites, replace them with treatment centers, hire more police officers so we can feel confident both in our downtown and in the suburbs again so we can attract more business investment, feel confident and then, and then grow the economy for the benefit of all. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the word affordability and this next question is asking about what specific actions you will take as mayor uh, to make the housing issue more affordable, both rent and home prices, of course, driven by the market. You have no control over the market. Uh, and the question goes on to say building low income housing does nothing for those close to or in the middle income bracket who are just looking for decent housing in a decent neighborhood. Yeah, and the one direct tool the mayor's office has to lower the price of homes is to ax the municipal land transfer tax for first-time home buyers, which is what I'm going to do. You can immediately drop $25,000, $30,000 off the price of a home. Uh, when someone buys their first home, it's a celebratory thing. We mm -hmm. shouldn't be looking at it as a cash grab. You know, they're, they're popping the cork on the champagne, <laughs> and then government goes, okay, while well, they're celebrating, I'm going to go in and steal thirty k from them. No, no, that's not going to be it anymore. we got to manage the budget responsibly so we can focus on the priorities that families are saying at the door. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, this next question is fairly blunt. You can understand where the viewer is coming from here. This, the question is this. The city has a fiscal shortfall. Are you going to waste our tax dollars renaming Dundas Street? Absolutely not. 
pretty simple answer okay. there. Okay, next one. Let's get to it. Uh, how do you plan to tackle gridlock downtown in downtown Toronto? Uh, major arteries are now down to one lane, Danforth and Bloor, and Go Transit is not always an option. Uh, the gridlock also impacts ambulance, first responders, delivery service to the core. Uh, we need to figure out what our priority is. So is it bikes, Cafe Tio, or first responders responding to emergencies? Yeah, well, it's first responders, absolutely, because every second that ambulances are delayed, and we've seen those videos, Instagram videos, of ambulances trying to get by on on Young Street, mm -hmm. uh, but they can't because there's no shoulder anymore because the shoulder's been taken up by these very rigid bike lanes with the concrete blocks. I'm the candidate who said right out of the gate, no more bike lanes on major roads. We're also going to not do the expansion of those red painted lanes. They have them in Scarborough, but they want to take them to North York and Etobicoke to get rid of even more traffic lanes. People on Kingston Road and Morningside, they tell me what it's like to have those headaches of, of sitting there in traffic, knowing that there's an entire lane they could be in, but they're not allowed. And, and there's hardly any bikes and not that many buses on them. So we're going to bring balance to that. Oh, and, and this goes without saying, I'm not tearing down the Gardner. I mean, I, I think that's just a bonkers proposition at this point. Maybe when we have many more transit options in the years ahead, and I'm going to work with the province and the feds uh, to get transit built, but right now we can't even entertain that idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, last question really quickly here, Anthony. We're, I'm glad we're getting through a lot of them mm -hmm. with you. What are your thoughts about pedestrian streets for downtown Toronto, an idea of a place where you can walk freely and not concern yourself at all with vehicles? Yeah, you know, Kensington Market actually has been doing that on weekends for a number of years now, and there's a couple appropriate places where it can happen, but uh, I, I wish this city was designed like, like parts of Paris and so mm -hmm. forth. It's mm -hmm. not. So I think, by and large, I can't do anything that's going to further the war on the car, that's going to worsen commutes and congestion, and also harm small businesses, because that's part of what's been going on with this hyper-aggressive bike lane culture. Small businesses can't do deliveries, customers can't access wheel-trans, persons with mobility issues. So I, I think we just got to bring common sense back to these issues. We're, we're reasonable people. We want a beautiful, vibrant city, uh, but, but we can't sort of go in a different direction. You know, Nick, I've said now is a time for choosing. Do we want to look more like Seattle, San Francisco, downtown Vancouver, some of those awful scenes? Or do we want to say we can fix this? We can have a more beautiful city for our families, for all Toronto families. And, and that's what I'm fighting for. Hmm. All right, mayoral candidate Anthony Fury, really appreciate your time and your answers to our viewer questions this morning. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for being Thank here. You.